Hey everybody, I made this Net Promoter Score dashboard template recently in Excel, and I want to show you how I did it, talk a little bit about Net Promoter Score, help you get set up if you're trying to work with NPS data yourself. This is one of the most common pieces of survey data out there. If you've been on the internet a long time, you've probably seen this question up here at some point. How likely is it that you would recommend this product, service, etc., to a friend or colleague? 1 to 10 or 0 to 10 is your scoring. This is super, super common, and it's because it's been studied really extensively. It's tied to all sorts of different business success metrics and stuff or correlated with them. So basically, when you get data for NPS, it's a survey. So it's going to come in the form of a list of responses. So in most cases, there's going to be a date. There's going to be either a customer name or some kind of thing representing who the customer is. If it's happening when they make a transaction, you might have a purchase amount. They're going to have a rating, 0 to 10, uh, a comment potentially about uh, what they what their experience was, and that's about it, right? That's the core data you're gonna see in almost all NPS data. So the NPS calculation is not just an average of everyone's responses. We're first classifying each person as a promoter, a passive, or a detractor. Promoters are people who are like nine, 10 scores who love your product. Passives are like seven or eights. They're and it, mm, they like it, but they don't love it. And detractors are zero to six. So anybody that kind of doesn't really like your product that much. Once we do that, we take the percentage of promoters and the percentage of detractors and we subtract the percentage of detractors from promoters. That gives us a percentage score and that's our NPS. It can be anywhere from negative 100 to positive 100. That's the range, but it's typically gonna be in the low negative figures up into the high positive figures. So when I got this data, this is just some fake sample data, it only had these first few columns. And what I did is I classified each person as a promoter, a passive, or a detractor. And I just did that by writing a little ifs statement here saying, oh, if it's greater than a certain number, less than a certain number, and otherwise. And essentially, that's just going to classify each person into one of these three categories. Essentially, there's a column here for each type, detractor, passive, and promoter, and then we give a one value if somebody falls into each category. Now, this seems redundant, but it's actually kind of important for the types of visualizations that I used in this dashboard. So when I sketched this out just on a piece of paper, I knew there were a few things I wanted to have. I knew I wanted to have a donut chart that just shows the NPS score and then compares it against the overall lifetime NPS score. I just think that's a useful comparison to have, and it's a pretty design element. Obviously, when the NPS score itself, I wanted to show how much it changed since the previous month, how it's changed over time, a little trend line, and the overall average score. And then I thought it would be valuable to just give a little info about promoters, passives, and distractors, how many there are, if they're trending up or down over time. In these kinds of scenarios, you really have to think about how much information you give your audience, because ultimately the only score that really matters here is this one. But I think the context really matters here. And because we're working with a small sample data set and a lot of people probably aren't having a huge number of people they're surveying for this. I think it's important to, rem to remind people that this is a pretty small sample set. There's only a few promoters, passives, and detractors, and so we shouldn't read too deeply into this ultimate percentage because it's going to swing up and down quite a bit. So let's talk about how we built this. The background shapes here are two different things. We've got a bunch of circles here and a bunch of rounded rectangles. Let's dig into these circles first because I think people really like this visual effect and just always ask me how it's made. So first things first, the only chart in this is this double donut chart you see here. All this stuff behind here is just a series of circles. Under the insert tab, you can insert circles. And then I've styled them using a few little techniques that help give it this cool glowy effect that you see. So the first is I have a solid fill that's a blue color with high transparency. When you put that on a dark background, it gives this kind of transparent glowy look. But then I've also added in a literal glow. If you go into your shape options here, you have the option to drop in a glow and that glow effect can be different sizes and transparencies. In this case, it's quite transparent, 90% and quite big, about 54, uh, 54 pixels. When you choose a color for this, if you choose a bright color and you have a dark background, you're gonna have to make sure it's very transparent or else it'll be too contrasty and it won't show up the way you want it to. And I've just done a version of that on all three of the circles that you see here. And then just drop this double donut right on top of it. And it creates this beautiful, it creates this beautiful sort of sci-fi looking effect. All of these text elements are just text boxes. The metric text that you see here is a text box that has been inserted. And then in the formula bar, I've hit equals and then pointed it to a cell. 
And then whenever that cell changes, this metric changes to match the cell. So it's dynamic text. Every time we add new data, it will flow through to the front and show up in this dashboard, which is ultimately what we want here, right? We don't wanna to have to manually update this every single time we get new survey responses. Let's talk a little bit about this double donut chart. So this double donut, it's pointing to some sort of basic data. First is the NPS score for the most recent month. Next is essentially one minus that, meaning I want it to be a 100% circle so that the percentage of the NPS takes up a proportionate percentage to the size. And then I've done the same thing for the lifetime value of NPS for the other section of this chart. So we're literally just selecting our data, going to donut chart, dropping it in. That's one of our rings. So we just click into our chart, hit select data, add another series. For this series in our Y values, we're gonna delete what's there and we're just gonna click this hit enter, and that's gonna add in the second circle for us. So now we've got those two circles and I'll cut and paste this over so you can see how you style these things. So we do the obvious stuff first, take out our background so it's transparent in the background, remove our border, take out any labels we don't want, all that kind of stuff. Then we're literally just clicking into each series and updating the colors to look however we want to match our kind of overall theme. Uh, when you do this, you have to keep in mind you have to change both the fill color and the uh, line color, the line being the, uh, or border color being the outline around each section. You'll notice in a lot of my chart designs, I use a little bit of transparency and a little bit of transparency is just a nice way to make your designs feel more cohesive and blend in with the background colors. If things feel too bright or too contrasty, you can always just increase the transparency a little bit, that'll help. You know, and with a little finagling, we get something that looks pretty good. In this case, I've labeled my bars by just adding a little guideline to each section of the donut chart. Again, we're using this more as a design element than anything here, right? We're not trying to make this some super actionable visual here. It's more to make it look great and to still tie it to data. And I think we've achieved that. I get asked a lot of questions about these trend line charts as well. What I tell people is this is just a standard bar chart. All I've done is clicked into my horizontal axis labels, my vertical axis labels, any of the guidelines, anything else, the legend, and I've just deleted all of that so it's just the line itself. That's all you need to do to create a trend line. In this case here, this trend line should probably be labeled as well. All right, now let's move over to the section with the promoters, passives, and detractors. These are all the same, so I'll just go over one of them and you can kind of extrapolate. Um, so a couple of things here. This background is a rounded rectangle. If you go under the insert tab, we have rounded rectangles. And when you drop rounded rectangles in, everybody, please go to the upper left-hand corner and adjust your roundness to match everything else or whatever else is around it or on the page. If you just use the standard one, all your roundnesses are gonna be different and not match up. So what I've done is I've just made this one fully round so that the circle inside aligns with it that you see here. This circle, again, just a circle with a sort of transparent blue background to give it that glowy effect. And then I've put a very subtle little smiley face in the background there. I don't know if you can see that on screen, but just for fun. The text works the same way as, before, as we saw before. This is just a text box and this is a text box pointing to a cell and this bar chart here is again just a standard bar chart tied to the data for all of the promoters throughout the period and again I always encourage people give context explain over explain if you can in this case I've explained what each of these means promoters passives and detractors I've also given a little bit of uh, information up here to explain how the score is being calculated and why these metrics matter when you do all that you're going to give something that's useful insightful and you can use these kind of design elements to make it more engaging get people more excited about it it's really a balance here right actionable insights are critically important they really do matter but the reality is that people like things that look great so we're making this look great and actionable and that's how we're getting something that really has the best chance of success and making an impact in your organization. So anyway, thanks everybody for tuning in. I will do a full walkthrough of this separately, um, but this is just a short kind of intro to get people started. Hope that helps. Have a great, wonderful day, uh, and thanks so much for tuning in. Oh, and if you haven't joined the newsletter, if you want this template or any of my other templates, I send these out for free on my newsletter to help people learn. It's just Excel files. That's all I really send out. Uh, I don't spam anyone. I don't do any of that. It's just useful, free tutorials to help people learn. Thanks everybody. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Bye.